Hey puppy, you want to teach the people about hyperthyroidism? You're such a model. Hey guys, it's Jasmine and that was Puppy. And today we are going to talk about hyperthyroidism and cats. If you are new to this channel and you like cat stuff or perhaps fitness and nutrition and wellness things for humans too, then make sure to click that subscribe button below as well as the little bell icon that's right next to it because we do put out new videos every cat or day. So all that said, on to today's subject, what is hyperthyroidism? Hyperthyroidism is when the thyroid gland, which is located in the neck on each side of your cat's trachea, becomes overactive and releases an excess of thyroid hormones which regulate the body's metabolism. Hyperthyroidism is the most common endocrine disease in the cat population, and it's typically discovered and diagnosed in middle-aged to adult cats with the average age being around 12 years old. Now, if you're wondering about hypothyroidism, which is when the thyroid gland is underactive and which happens to be a disorder that's become fairly common in humans and even dogs, when it comes to cats, hypothyroidism is extremely rare, so we won't be discussing it in this video. Now, what are the common symptoms of hyperthyroidism that you may notice in your feline fur baby? A big one is weight loss, which is usually accompanied by increased hunger, and that also correlates with consuming more than normal. So if you notice that your cat is not only really, really hungry, but also eating more than normal, but also still losing weight, that's a huge sign. Along with that, you might notice increased drinking of the water bowl and also increase urination along with it. Your cat can also seem more restless or suddenly aggressive and that can include nocturnal vocalizing which basically means more activity at night and more noise at night. as well as uncapped or greasy looking fur, and even periodic diarrhea and vomiting. Basically, if your cat seems like he or she is on hyperdrive, but also stressed or anxious all at the same time, it may be a good idea to go get them checked where your vet can do the proper blood tests and maybe even a thyroid scan to figure out exactly what's going on. Now, let's say that your cat does get diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. How is it treated and is it even curable? The good news is yes, it can be curable. And medically, there are three main treatments. One option, is oral medication, specifically the brand name Tapazol, which is a lifelong daily medication, but it can also produce negative side effects in 10 to 15% of cats. Another option is surgical removal of the thyroid gland, which is usually the case if a tumor is involved. This is often successful and can result in a cure, but the biggest risk is with the older cats who have already seen a decline in health probably due to the hyperthyroidism because putting your cat under anesthesia is involved and that could be challenging for some cats to recover from. The third option is radioactive iodine therapy. This is an injection that's usually just a one-time treatment and it's considered to be the most effective treatment because it doesn't require surgery or the risk of being under anesthesia or taking lifelong medication. However, it is the most expensive option up front and does usually require your cat to be hospitalized for about two weeks. As for non-medical treatment options, that is where diet comes in. There are commercial foods available specifically for cats with hyperthyroidism by brands like Hills Prescription Food, which control the iodine content to a very minimal amount. And this type of food in particular comes in dry and canned versions with the canned food running at an average of about $2.50 per can. You guys can imagine, I didn't even look up the price of the dry food because 
we don't do dry food in these parts, but feeding your cat a raw food or prey model diet and a homemade one at that not only saves you so much more money than the $2.50 you would pay per can, for example, but it provides your cat with the optimal nutrients that he or she needs to thrive and you can control the iodine content yourself. So let's get back into what exactly iodine has to do with all of this. Like we spoke about in last week's video, biologically, iodine is only required in the body for thyroid hormone synthesis. That's why too much iodine can cause the thyroid to become overactive, while too little iodine can cause it to become underactive, both of which directly affect the metabolism. What's interesting is that until fairly recently, the root cause of hyperthyroidism in cats wasn't completely clear, but studies have shown that diet does play a big part. This study from the Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association in 2000 concluded that cats who consume large amounts of fish-flavored commercial cat food have been more likely to develop the disease. Which may be unsurprising considering how in the last video we also discussed how foods from the ocean contain the highest levels of iodine. It has also been shown that limiting dietary iodine does lower and regulate the hormone levels of cats who've been diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, as you can see in this study from the New Zealand Veterinary Journal. So at this point, you may be saying to yourself, okay, so I just have to avoid feeding my cat fish-flavored commercial cat food, maybe avoid feeding my cat anything from the ocean, and also make sure that I feed my cat a low iodine diet and everything will be good, right? Well, hold your kitties because it is about to get really interesting. In May of 2017, the New York Times published a story about cats and hyperthyroidism. This article did bring up how a cat's diet could affect thyroid function, but what it really brought into light is the correlation between the epidemic in hyperthyroidism in house cats and the use of household chemicals, specifically flame retardants like polybrominated diphenyl ethers, or PBDEs. Beginning in the 70s, these chemicals were used in everything from couch cushions to carpet to electronics. Not only that, but they leached from these items into particles of house dust, for example, which is impossible to escape if you live in any home. So although there's no doubt that these kinds of chemicals are also harmful to humans, we are more likely to breathe them in in a household while cats are more likely to actually ingest them. Linda Birnbaum, who is a toxicologist referred in the article from the New York Times, states, how do cats behave? They crawl on the floor, they sit on the couch, they lick their paws all the time, so anything in the dust, they're going to end up ingesting. Also keep in mind the simple physics of it. Cats are smaller creatures, so the littlest bit that they might ingest would potentially affect them a lot stronger than a comparatively giant human. And in case you're wondering how these chemicals specifically can contribute to hyperthyroidism of all things, the article also states that PBDEs also happen to have a chemical structure that resembles thyroid hormones and may mimic or compete with these hormones in the body binding to their receptors and interfering with their transport and metabolism. So although the studies and research can't officially be 100% definitive, it's impossible to deny the correlation between the hyperthyroidism epidemic that began with cats in the 70s and the use of these PBDEs in households at that time. As you can tell, I found this article super fascinating. So regardless to if your cat already has hyperthyroidism or not, I strongly suggest that you go read it for yourself and I'll leave a link to it in the description below of this video, as well as anything else that I happen to talk about today. So considering all of these factors that we've discussed so far, what can you do to possibly prevent your cat from getting hyperthyroidism or to even just detect it as early as possible? The number one thing that you have control over and that you can do is to choose the best diet that you can 
for your cat that not only honors your cat's natural instincts, but that provides him or her with the proper nutrients in order to be the happiest, healthiest, thriving fur baby that he or she can be. And yes, I am talking about raw cat food or the prey model diet. The second thing you can do is to avoid excess iodine by avoiding foods from the ocean, including fish and seaweed. Especially avoid cheap commercial fish flavored cat foods, which tend to include portions of the fish with an even higher iodine level, like the head and the skins. The third thing you can do is opt for regular salt as opposed to iodized salt when making the raw food recipe on catladyfitness.com. Even though the recipe as is already uses a minimal amount of iodine, this may be a good thing to try if your cat has already been diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. Just make sure to monitor any changes in your cat's behavior or appearance. And if you're wondering how to adjust the recipe to where you're using regular salt instead of iodized salt, check out the video from last week entitled, Do Cats Need Dietary Iodine? That is in the Cat Stuff playlist, which I will also link in the description below. And finally, make sure that you keep up with your regular regular checkups with your vet just to ensure that all is well in your kitty's world and body. Make it a point to get blood and urine tests annually because this will help detect hyperthyroidism early. And it's also a good idea to take your fur baby to get a full physical exam about every six months once they reach middle age, which is considered to be about six years old. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it interesting or helpful. If you did, please make sure to click that thumbs up below because that helps us know the content that you like to see. Also, remember to click that subscribe button below and the little bell icon that's right next to it to get notified whenever we do put new videos up because we have a bunch of fun content content coming up. Not only that, but Puppy has this really ambitious goal to where he wants to hit 8,000 subscribers by his birthday, which is August 18th. He's a Leo. Look who I managed to round up for you guys. Say hello. I just realized I can't talk with you there. You're covering the mic. You're a good boy. Okay. P.S. We are going to have a video coming up about cat's preferences when it comes to holding them because, as you can see, Puppy does not prefer being held up like Simba from The Lion King. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye!